When it comes to welding, choosing the right equipment can be overwhelming, especially for those new to the craft. Two of the most popular types of welding methods are MIG, or metal inert gas, and TIG, or tungsten inert gas. Although they both fall under the category of arc welding processes, they differ significantly in their functionality, applications, and the level of skill required. Whether you're a professional welder or a hobbyist, understanding the fundamental differences between MIG and TIG welding can help you select the appropriate technique for your specific project. So, in this video, we'll break down the difference between these two welding methods, starting from how they work to their pros, cons, and common uses. Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. First, let's dive into the basics of how each process works. MIG welding is often considered to be the easier of the two methods, making it a go-to choice for beginners. It uses a continuously fed wire that acts as both the electrode and the filler material. The wire is automatically fed through the MIG gun, and when the welder pulls the trigger, an electric arc forms between the wire and the metal being welded. This arc generates heat, which melts the wire, creating the weld. To protect the weld pool from oxidation and contamination, a shielding gas, typically a mix of argon and carbon dioxide, is released through the gun. This creates a clean, strong weld. The process is relatively fast, and because the wire is fed automatically, it doesn't require as much precision or control from the welder. MIG welding is well suited for welding thicker metals and can be used on a variety of materials, including steel, aluminum, and stainless steel. On the other hand, TIG welding is a more delicate and versatile process that requires a higher level of skill and precision. In TIG welding, the welder uses a non-consumable tungsten electrode to create the arc. Unlike MIG welding, the electrode does not melt and become part of the weld. Instead, the welder may use a separate filler rod if needed, or in some cases, the base metals themselves are fused together without any filler. Shielding gas, usually pure argon, is also used to protect the weld area from contamination. TIG welding gives the welder greater control over the weld bead, allowing for more intricate and precise work. However, it's also a slower process than MIG welding, and because the welder must manually control both the electrode and the filler rod, it requires a steady hand and a lot of practice. Now that we've covered the basic mechanics, Let's talk about the materials and thicknesses that each method is best suited for. MIG welding is widely used for thicker metals. If you're working on something like a car chassis, a metal gate, or any other project involving substantial material, MIG is likely the better choice. It can quickly lay down long welds and handle jobs where strength is crucial. The automatic feeding of the wire also makes it easier to weld over long seams without stopping which speeds up the process significantly. Additionally, MIG welding is more forgiving if the material is not perfectly clean. Small amounts of rust, dirt, or paint can often be welded over with minimal issue, making it a more versatile option for rougher environments or fieldwork. In contrast, TIG welding excels when working with thinner materials or metals that require a high degree of precision. This makes it an excellent choice for tasks like welding pipes, repairing jewelry, or working on artwork and custom metal fabrications. TIG welding can handle a variety of metals, including steel, aluminum, magnesium, copper, and even titanium, but its slower speed makes it less efficient for larger, thicker projects. One of the unique strengths of TIG welding is its ability to create incredibly clean and aesthetically pleasing welds, often with little to no spatter. If your project demands a weld with a neat finish that doesn't require grinding or sanding afterward, TIG is probably your best bet. When it comes to speed and efficiency, MIG welding is the clear winner. The automatic wire feed and relatively straightforward process allow for fast production rates 
which is why it's so commonly used in industrial settings where time is a critical factor. MIG welders are designed to work quickly and produce strong welds without a lot of setup or downtime between welds. Because the wire is continuously fed, it's easier to achieve consistent welds over long distances, which makes it ideal for production environments where consistency and speed are vital. On the other hand, TIG welding is much slower because it's a manual process that demands high precision. Each weld requires careful setup and attention to detail. The welder has to coordinate both hands, one to hold the torch and the other to feed the filler rod, and even control the foot pedal that adjusts the heat in many cases. For this reason, TIG welding is less suited for production work, where speed is essential but is perfect for tasks that require meticulous attention. Skill level is another crucial difference between MIG and TIG welding. As mentioned earlier, MIG welding is generally considered easier to learn. The process is more forgiving, and the automatic wire feed means the welder doesn't have to worry as much about controlling the material being added to the weld pool. This makes MIG an excellent starting point for those new to welding or for projects where speed is more important than precision. TIG welding, on the other hand, is far more challenging to master. The welder needs to have excellent hand-eye coordination and control over both the torch and the filler material. Additionally, TIG welding requires a deep understanding of how different metals react to heat and how to adjust settings like amperage to avoid warping or burning through the material. It's definitely not a beginner-friendly process, but for those willing to invest the time and effort, the results can be stunning. Finally, let's discuss cost and equipment. MIG welders tend to be more affordable, both in terms of the machine itself and consumables like the wire and gas. Because MIG welding is faster and more efficient, it also requires less time and energy, making it more cost-effective for larger projects. TIG welders, on the other hand, are generally more expensive up front, and the process is slower, meaning that labor costs can quickly add up on large projects. Additionally, TIG welding often requires more expensive materials, such as pure tungsten electrodes and high-quality shielding gas, which can increase the overall cost. Both MIG and TIG welding have their strengths and weaknesses, and the right choice depends largely on the specifics of your project. MIG welding is perfect for beginners and for working with thicker metals or projects that require speed and efficiency. TIG welding, while more difficult to learn, offers unmatched precision and is ideal for delicate work or situations where the appearance of the weld is a top priority. Whether you're working on industrial applications, car repairs, or intricate metalwork, understanding these key differences will help you choose the best tool for the job. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.